Hey y'all, welcome to week two of book study. We are super excited and so proud of y'all for being here. Um, before we dig into the next few chapters, we wanted to share just how great it was for y'all sending in your whys. It was really interesting to see just the difference um, in everybody's why and like the different stages, I guess, that you're at with your why. Um, some of y'all were, you know, just barely scratching the surface and it is going to be really good just to see the difference just in, I don't know, in just a few months. Um, and some of y'all, I did, I cried a little bit. So I loved that so much. Um, either way, you, well, your why, your why is going to evolve. Um, and most important thing is to start somewhere and just don't forget, y'all, this is so important. Um, don't forget it to make it about you. So keep revisiting your why. Um, and when you do, ask yourself, okay, is this about me? And if it's not, then you just keep digging. Um, and also, just like we talked about last week, make a dream board. And I honestly have not done this yet. I promise I'm going to do it. That's something that is on my to-do list. Um, but cut pictures out so it's right in front of you. I have a board right here above my desk, and that is where I'm going to put it. Um, that way I can see it every single day. Um, and make sure y'all are telling people about your why. I tell Christina about my why all the time, anytime it changes, because I need her to hold me accountable. So when things get hard and I don't want to do what I want, what I need to be doing, she reminds me of why I am doing that. So if you haven't dug into your why, maybe this is just your first time getting on this book study, please make it a priority because your why is the foundation to your business. So with that said, chapter three. Okay, so we've worked on our why. We have set some goals and now it's time to talk to the people. But who do we talk to? Where do we even start? Um, first things first, you have got to make a list. And some of y'all, that may stress you out a bit, especially if you're brand new, but it is definitely a must. You cannot build this without some kind of list. Um, I don't go around telling all my new people, hey, <laughs> go make a go make a list of 50 people. That would really scare a lot of the people. Um, I mean, just know who you are talking to. You have to know something about the people that join you because some people, I can think of a lot of people on my team right now that it would not have scared them if I'd have said, go make lists of 100 people because they would have done it because that is not a struggle for them. But some people, I... I have to say, especially if you're like an introvert and you just don't get out much, like I think about who I'm talking to and I usually will just say, okay, who are three to five people that you know could totally benefit from these products? So you have to baby step, baby step them, hold their hand. Um, I don't want them quitting before they even start by saying, hey, go make a list of a hundred. So it's really important to know a little bit about the people before you call them to action on that. Um, the truth is, no matter what your feelings are about having a list, whether the list is scattered in your brain, whether it's a list of your Facebook friends, your contacts in your phone, um, if you're using an app, it's still a list and you have got to have it. Um, it's kind of like your playbook for your business. Um, there will be changes made to it as your business continues to grow, but y'all, you cannot grow without one. It's where your business starts. So the good thing about what we share is every single person can benefit from what we have. We don't market to any specific person. If you are breathing, you have a gut. So you cannot prejudge who does and doesn't need our products because you don't, you don't ever know what somebody's struggling with. No one would have guessed that I had all the struggles that I had looking at me. No one would have guessed that I was not happy in my job and that we were living paycheck to paycheck. Y'all, I have so many different kind of people on my team. I have teenage girls on my team with digestive struggles and hormone struggles. I have good old country boys who are you good, man? I'm to Uh-oh. You got it, Abby? Okay. Okay. So I have good good old country boys who have fished and hunt with my husband y'all they had struggles with their sleep and with energy and so they're taking these products um i have an electrician that i signed up last month that was dealing with reflux and arthritis 
Um, I have babies, toddlers, toddlers, not babies, um, with skin issues and digestive struggles. Um, 70 year olds have lots of those because y'all, if elderly people are not taking vitamins, they need to be, we all need to be. And so most of the people that I have signed up that are older, they're already on supplements. So you just replace our, their supplements with what we have. So everybody needs Plexus. So do not prejudge people. Um, and it's the same thing with the opportunity. Not, not everyone walks around with a big old neon sign announcing that they have money struggles and how they hate their job and how much they're sacrificing working 60 hours a week to make ends meet. You have no idea if this opportunity would be an answer to somebody's prayers like it was mine. Y'all cannot even imagine if Christina hadn't offered me the opportunity way more than way more than 12 times. Um, she talked to me about this opportunity for a solid year. Um, and she knew what this could mean for my family way before I could even see it. And I'm just really grateful that she did not prejudge me. Um, I think that'll look pretty healthy back then. Uh, but I was on six prescriptions and she was completely clueless to that. So again, no prejudging. Not everyone will want to try these products with you. Not everyone's going to want to grow this business with you, but it is our job. It's our responsibility. I feel like it's our responsibility to make sure that they know what is possible and what we have that can help them over and over and over. Um, so not only do you need to make a master list, you also need to know which ones are your dream teamers. Um, these are people that for some reason you think would be amazing at this business. So know who you're looking for and why you think they would be great. Make sure you have these things written down. She also talked about having a dirt list, which I was scared to read what that was about. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't think I want to be on a dirt list, but um, I definitely had a dirt list. Um, when I started this business, I wasn't open to the opportunity, but I did want to earn some extra cash. And so I think I went silver on day two, still not open to the opportunity, but I grabbed people from my dirt list. Didn't know about the dirt list, but that was my mom and my two best friends. They would have, I mean, I could say, let's go shopping and drive six hours and come right back home. Like that's just the kind of people that are on your dirt list. Those that will do whatever you tell them. And honestly, let's see, one of those people went senior Ruby on my team. And the other two have connected me with lots of people that have needed this product, needed our products. So if you are brand new, you may be thinking, I do not know enough people to make a list. Or if you've already messaged everyone you know, you may be thinking, where can I find more people? So thank goodness for social media. Um, I always ask my people when they first join me, I say, how many Facebook brands do you have? And they usually respond with some crazy number, whether it's 400 or 4,000. Um, they'll tell me their number and then they say, but I don't know them all. And I'm like, okay, good. We're in the business of making new friends. So let's start with the ones that you do know. Um, and y'all, you can start with the A's or the Z's, or you can sort your list by oldest to newest. If you do that, then your oldest friends are usually the friends that you've known the longest, so start there. Um, I'll tell y'all, Laurel, I don't know if some of y'all know her. Um, she is my cousin. She's my level one, but she did not. She refused to have social media. She just wasn't doing it. But y'all, <laughs> she went Ruby with just the contacts in her phone. And she told me today, I asked her, how many did you actually have? And she said, 906. And y'all, she messaged every single one of them every one of them. And she went Ruby. So um, that was pretty awesome. I love telling people that. Um, I also hear this a lot, a lot because I live in a small town, but we have a small town and we have several who are already sharing. Okay. Or, well, it seems like everyone has already tried it or we all have the same friends. Y'all, yeah, and hopefully y'all will definitely get to meet these people, but we have four diamonds, four diamonds that I love so dearly. They all lived in the same town when they went diamonds, four of them. That is pretty awesome. Um, but a big eye opener is going to your Facebook and looking at how many friends 
you and that other person share how many y'all have in common. Um, now, if you have, let's say you have 300 in common and 700, 700 are not in common. Okay, well, then go with the 700 that are not in common. Um, and another thing, don't assume that that person that is sharing has even messaged those people that you have in common. And even if they have, who's to say that they will not join you instead? Um, you cannot assume others have already messaged them. So put them on your list anyway. Um, I looked this up while ago. We have almost 50,000 people in our county. And I know every single person has not heard of Plexus. And even if they had, even if they have, thankfully we get to grow a business anywhere we want. Um, we can recruit people from all over the world and we should be recruiting people from all over the world. So always be open to making new friends no matter where you are. Um, I have been doing this for two and a half years now and y'all, I'm still adding people to my list. Uh, this list in the book, I love it. I was actually able to add a pretty good bit of people just by using this list. Um, so I love it. You can think about people at your church. Uh, there was a lot of people that I have not thought about at my church. Um, your kids, teachers um, through the years, not just the, the teachers they have now. Think about the teachers they had 10 years ago because I have teenagers. So um, your husband's friends and then their wives. And I was just thinking today, like, OK, what about my husband's friends, wives, parents, like I just was starting to think, I know a lot of these people, um, different groups that you're, you are a part of, um, your kids, friends, parents, and even the classmates, parents, um, of course, people at my gym, um, people that you see weekly at Walmart or the grocery store. My favorite was your wedding list. You know, a lot of people have like an insane amount of people they invite to their wedding. If they're good enough to be invited to your wedding, they're definitely people you need to be talking about Plexus with. So your friends, check out their friends and then check out their friends. I did that a while ago, waiting on nine o'clock. That's what I was doing. Um, your list really should be endless. Um, and the beauty of having Facebook, there are tons and tons of different groups that you can be in. Um, I was thinking about the groups that I have, I'm in now. I'm in a mom of boys group. Um, a healthy eating group. <laughs> That's funny. I really am trying to eat healthy. Um, I'm in a CrossFit group, but there's like, there's gardening groups and cooking groups. There's so many different groups. And I know y'all are in some groups. So if y'all want to drop just some of the examples of the groups that you have or that you're in on Facebook in the chat, that would be great because I need to be in some more groups. Um, anyway, so some of y'all are having feelings about the list and even having feelings about sending out messages and it's totally okay. Um, I did too and I'm pretty sure every single person that starts this business does. It's completely normal. Um, you can overcome it if you choose to overcome it, but y'all two things and this is not in the book, so you're going to need to write this down. You're going to hear it a bunch. Um, two things I've learned over the past few years that will change everything when it comes to sharing plexus with others. Y'all gotta write this down. Y'all got a pen? This is gonna save y'all a hot minute. Stop wasting time worrying about what others think. They are not thinking half the things that you think they are thinking, I promise you. Man, that will save you a whole bunch of time if you will just go ahead and do that right now. So number two, you're gonna hear this 462 times. It is not about you. It's not about you at all. Every time y'all I go to message, even two and a half years later, I still tell myself this just out of habit. Um, it's not about me. All the thoughts that keep you from messaging others are self-focused. What will they think of me? What if they think I just want their money? What if they think I'm not genuine? So what? <laughs> what if they do think that? Will you die? No, you will not die. I promise you. Um, ask yourself this instead. And this not sting just a little bit. What if I don't message them because I'm too chicken of what they may think of me and they continue to struggle with their IBS or their migraines or their PCOS 
or their diabetes. Y'all, that's a bunch of doctor visits is all I know. And I had eight, eight, 18, $8,000 in doctor visit bills before I joined Plexus. So just know that. Um, or that they're still, they would still struggle with living paycheck to paycheck or stay in the job that they hate that's keeping them from being with their family more. What if I message them and I can help them like someone helped me? What if I can make that big of an impact in someone's life? That is what I ask myself. Um, and so when I start asking myself those questions, y'all, I get a lot more confident um, in what I'm doing and why I am doing it. So why am I doing it? To help other people. Um, so when I say those things to myself, it also makes me get really brave and message my dream teamers um, and my chicken listers. I still have chicken listers. I still message them. I challenge myself every day to message somebody on my chicken list. Um, and if this is the first time you've ever heard of a chicken list, it's basically anybody that scares you to death thinking about sending them a message. For me, people like my OBGYN. I messaged them. It's been a few months, but I did. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, I see him all, the, well, not all the time, but I see him once a year. So I was pretty scared, but it's because he's smarter than I am. <laughs> but those people, I mean, that's usually the people that are on my chicken list are people who are smarter than me. Hello, that is the people that you want to build with. These are usually the people that you want on your team. Um, and you can't have them on your team if you don't message the people. She says in the book that none of us know what anyone is thinking. So all the time and energy you spend speculating is a waste of time. Perfect example, y'all, I had recently recruited a dream teamer. I have no idea if she's on this call, she might be. Um, it took me 18 months to get her to join me. I'm pretty sure that is the probably hardest person <laughs> I've ever recruited. Um, and honestly, I do not think she would ever be open to the opportunity because it just took me a, a whole lot of follow-ups. Um, she was real skeptical. Um, we got on our welcome call and before I could even get the magic question out, she was already asking me about the business. So she had been following my journey for a while. And honestly, I never would have thought she would have been open at first. So I was really nervous to even ask the magic question. She went senior silver this past month. So great. So glad that she was open. Um, but y'all, you just never know. And if I had not done the welcome call, I may not even have even known she was open. So do the welcome calls, ask the magic question. And if y'all don't know what a welcome call is just yet, ask your sponsor because um, they're game changers for your business. Uh, and I think we're gonna be talking about that more in the next few chapters. Um, but just repeating what she said, y'all, don't be a chicken snit, I'll say that. Um, it could cost you millions and keep you from living the life that you really want. Brittany said on Monday Night Live that the other side of that fear is the life you have always wanted. So you will have a gazillion different kind of lists. I think back of when I first started at my kitchen table on scrap sheet of paper, and I would have all these balls of paper just thrown up, thrown everywhere. Um, but y'all, eventually you need to find some kind of system that works best for you because those that were on the very first list you ever made, they still need to be on your follow-up list. Um, I've done my list many different ways, but this is going to make Abby cringe probably. Um, but because she's a lot more neater than I am. But y'all, I have a planner, a plum paper planners. You can go on um, their website and you can edit the planner how you want to. And so took me about three to figure out but I added like some notebook paper in each month and so I'm a paper and pen kind of girl and so this is can y'all see this this is a list I have two sheets like that with each month and so let's say it's April it's May now and so I have a list and there's over 100 people on it I message those people and then I'll flip back <laughs> I flip back and then I use Marches and Aprils and the months before I flip, I use those lists to follow up. Y'all, it works for me. Um, I do use Doe some. I know Abby uses Doe a lot, and Doe is really cool. It is an app, and basically you transfer your Facebook and your Instagram friends all into this app, 
um, and you're able to like, it's probably why I haven't used it that much is because I don't know all the details about it, but yes, Teamsy is great, um, but it's Do D-O-U-G-H, but you can like click, it sends you a list of people daily, you can tell it how many you want it to send, and then you can put those people, um, you can put notes on those people, follow up in two weeks where it pops back up, it's really organized. And I think it's great. And I probably need to use that, but that is what works for me. So you'll find what works for you, but you need to find something that does work. So that's that. Um, also know that as you have people join your team, that you will be marking them out. And it's really important. You'll be marking them out because they're joining you. Um, but it's real important to play, replace them with new people. I do this every day. I did it last night as I was laying in the bed trying to get sleepy. I'm adding Facebook friends. Um, most of them are people I don't even know. And here's the thing. I had feelings about that at first, but if you send them a friend request and they actually accept, which a lot of times they do, then they're open to being your friend too. So that is pretty cool. Um, I started my business in 2021. Yes. Um, and had barely a thousand Facebook friends. And now I have like 2,700 um, I think the max on Facebook is 5,000. So still got a ways to go. Um, but you can get new Facebook friends anywhere. You have a friend that knows a lot of people, look on their friends list. Some are private, but a lot of them aren't. Um, see if anybody stands out that you want to add. If you see somebody that you think would be great at this, and you can tell, oh, you can tell by their Facebook page usually. Um, go to your mom's page. I was doing this earlier. I had put up a post on Mother's Day and all these people had commented. And I was like, oh, I know her. And I just started adding people from my mom's friends. Um, go to your high school reunion page, your church page, old, old groups that you've been in before. And y'all just be open to making new friends. I make new friends when I go shopping, which is usually once a week. Uh, on Fridays when I'm out running errands, I call my errands shopping. Um, but I know all the girls like at the boutiques. I know a lot of their friends. I know a lot of the people at TJ Maxx. Um, and I think like Abby, we were talking about this earlier. Like if you're a mom with littles, then make sure you get involved with um, kid activities in your community so you can go meet the other moms. That is a great way to meet people. Um, I know Abby does that. And I remember April doing this. I think it was last year, her doing a swimming lesson with her kid and she was just telling us about the moms that she was meeting there. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so you should be adding friends to your list um, from your Facebook, but also people that you are meeting out in places. Um, I was at a wedding recently. And of course I was taking advantage of that wedding, talking to all the people, um, think about baby showers or any kind of birthday parties, um, whatever it may be. You never know that you could be sitting right beside your dream teamer. So go where the people are. Be open to meeting new people. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to mention Plexus right when you meet them, but just ask good questions. Ask, ask what do they do for a living? Learn who they are. Um, Y'all, and when you do, make sure somehow you get their last name. That way you can, you know, friend request them later. Um, but you can tell a lot by somebody just by asking what they do for a living. How long have you been doing it? Do you enjoy it? Um, so many times I've had these conversations and I've just heard struggles just from them answering these questions. I usually hear, well, right now I'm working full time at the hospital. We're hoping my husband gets a promotion by the end of the year so I can drop to, to part time. Y'all, what I heard was I need an opportunity or I'm a stay at home mom because I have four children and one's autistic. Okay, well, I heard she's a tired mama. She needs our products and she could probably use the opportunity for the community. Um, so you can tell a lot just by asking someone what they, what they do. Um, if, some, if someone doesn't love their job, you usually can see it all over their face. We are problem solvers. It's what we do. So be a good listener so you can know what their problems are. Uh, and listen, if you're interested in them, they're probably going to ask what you do for a living. Plus, you can friend request them on Facebook. When they see your friend request, I can almost guarantee you that they are going to go check out um, your Facebook page and see what you are all about. Uh, they, 
will probably think, oh, well, that's why she was so cheerful at that wedding. That's why her skin was glowing. She must be on those gut health supplements that she's selling. I'm not kidding. I bet that's what they think. Um, so your success depends on your willingness to connect with others, plain and simple. Um, and I know that freaks some of y'all out because you don't think you're a great connector. Y'all, it is okay if you're willing to learn. I promise you it is okay. And I can tell you why. We have diamonds that will tell you that connecting is not their strengths on. You have a diamond leader that will, she will straight tell you. And I can say this because her word last year and she announced it all over Facebook was connecting. Christina, that is not her strength. Like she was not a good connector, but she was willing to learn. She spent a whole year and y'all, she coaches me. And I promise you, she really put a lot of effort into learning how to connect better with people. Um, so if you're willing to learn, you definitely can do that. It's, I mean, I say it's simple because I am a connector, um, but it really is just y'all smile at the people, ask really good questions, be interested in what they're saying and listen, nothing more, really simple. So now that we know exactly how to create our list and where to get our people from, Abby is going to go over the do's and don'ts of sharing your own story with other people. All right, Abby. Terry, that was so good. It was a long, but I'm just going to drink my drink now. You go for it. <laughs> that was so good. Thank you. So many good tips. I'm definitely going to be using the last one. Smile at all of the people. <laughs> I think I need to do that more. And for the record, I am not neat or neater than you, more neat than you at all. I just can't even read my own handwriting. So I well, could, you can't even say it right. More neat, neater, more neater. I don't know. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> neater, more neat. I don't know. <laughs> um, I can't read my own handwriting. So that's why I use dough and yeah, that works for me, but whatever system you guys find that works for you. I mean, stick with it. Okay. So chapter four, what's your story? So she starts out by saying you are a storyteller. Did you guys know that? If you don't feel like you're good at telling stories, you're going to become very good at telling stories because that is going to make you money and make you income here with Plexus. So she says that facts tell, but stories sell. And I was Googling a little bit about stories and network marketing. And what I found was that stories are remembered up to 22 times more than facts alone, 22 times. So learning how to tell your story here at Plexus um, can really help you connect with people and to develop a deeper connection with them. So we really want to be able to tap into emotions. That's another big part too of telling your story because um, people love vulnerability. They love to hear other people's stories and they just love to hear victories and wins. And so if we can really tap into those things here with sharing our product story, our business story, both, that's going to be so beneficial as you're looking to grow your team and grow your paycheck. So basically you are a paid storyteller. And um, like I said, the better you get, the quicker your, your paycheck is going to grow. So one book I was thinking about today, and I don't I have the actual cover, sorry guys, but it's called Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. I have no idea when we did this book study. It was sometime last year, I believe. I think Terry's ready to write out the answer. Um, oh, nope, she just likes the book. <laughs> last year. But if you guys are more into like, I really need to figure out this whole storytelling thing. This book is so good. Basically walks through every single, every single step on how to really be a good story writer. So um, check that one out building a story brand. So then she talks about the difference between your why and your story. So the why is really focusing on your goals, your dreams. What will your life look like? Because you said yes to this opportunity or to these products. And the story is actually really telling about your life. This is focusing on your story, your current situation or your past situation and why you wanted a change and how it's going to impact or how it has impacted your life. It's really the facts, not the hopes of what is to come. So basically your why is a result of your story. You are here because you had a story, you wanted to change it 
And now you have the ability to create your why. So keep those two straight as we're continuing on through this book. So maybe you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start with these stories. I was there too, guys. But the good news is, is that she lays out a real simple formula for us. Four questions. Who are you and where have you been? What's happened in your life to cause you to look for more? How you heard about the company, our company here, and why you had to be a, why you had to be a part of it. And then what, what is it doing for you or going to do for you? So I'm going to give you guys two examples here. The first one is my business story. Now, I've been with Plexus four years, so it's, it's shifted over time. I'll let you guys know that I started sharing the day I clicked enroll because I wanted to cover my product costs. Obviously, my why, my, my why did not stay there. It got a lot bigger. But here's kind of my backstory. So number one is... Who are you and where you've been? So as a teacher, I was tired of the early morning wake-ups and day, daycare drop-offs. I hated the crazy traffic I had to fight on my way to work. And I was just tired of being run by the nine to, flat, nine to five clock. Number two is what, uh, what's happened in your life to cause you to look for more? So as a mom of two littles, that was at the time I have three now, who will be starting school soon, I wanted to be that present mom. I long to be at home and to spend more time with my kids and have time to cook and clean and not feel rushed all the time. And I want freedom to plan our days the way I want to and to create more memories together. The third step is how you heard about the company and why you had to be a part of it. So my sister introduced me to Plexus and we quickly realized that what we had at our fingertips, the way to achieve total financial and time freedom and to create the lifestyle we really wanted to live. And then four is what is it going to do for you or what is it doing for you? Four, I'm excited to grow my team and to help others in their health and to have more options too. I'm fitting in this work around my teaching job, kids and the other things on my plate so that I can ultimately resign from my nine to five career and live out the lifestyle of freedom that my family and I desire to live. So four, four steps, four questions. So then here's a product example for you guys. When I started on my Plexus journey four years ago, I was an exhausted teacher. My energy levels tanked every afternoon. I was grabbing for treats from the teacher's lounge to get me through the school day. I was eating ice cream every night before bed to, to celebrate surviving another day. Sounds pretty sad, right? but I guarantee there's some of you or people in your life that can relate with my story. The second one was I, I was tired of feeling like I was in survival mode every day. I wanted to feel better and like I had control of my own health again. I wanted to be a better teacher and mom and wife and not feel like I was drained all the time. Third question, my sister shared the pink drink with me and I was so excited to get my box in the mail. About two weeks in, I already started noticing I had more energy and wasn't reaching for the sugar every afternoon. And four, I'm so excited that I found a clean, simple, great lasting, uh, great, so not lasting, great tasting tool that I can fit into my busy days. These products have not only changed my life, but hundreds of others in my life too. Life is too short not to feel your best each day. So as you guys fill out these four uh, questions, Basically, you're going to just smush it together, right? Put it all together to form a seamless, short story. Now, we want to keep it short. Romy says 45 seconds max. I call it my elevator speech. So if you were stuck in an elevator with someone and they look over you and, and they say, hey, tell me about you or tell me what you do. Or, tell, me, tell me about your life. You have 45 seconds to nail this thing, right? So you're going to want, want to work on creating this compelling story um, using this formula and then practice it seamlessly until you get it down to 45 seconds. Basically, Christina says, and Terry reminded me of this today. Basically, she says, this is my life before Plexus. This is what my life looks like now. That's really the formula, just in a simpler version. And then you guys remember that the person you're talking to is actually more important than you are. So keep your story short and then shift the focus to them and let's learn more about them and their story. So this makes me think of welcome calls and I know that Terry had referenced this before too, but 
Um, the way I do my welcome calls is I jump on the phone and kind of get their buy-in for the call, let them know what they can expect. And then I jump right into my story. Again, perfect opportunity for a short story, 45 seconds, a minute, two minutes max. And then we're going ahead and pivoting to the person, right? And asking a good question. Tell me what you want from Plexus. What are you hoping that Plexus will help you with? So you're immediately shifting right into them for the rest of the call. So that's what you should be doing in your story. What about what you should leave out? Okay, so we don't want to put anything in the the um, in your story that is going to be a root of doubt for them or make them think, well, if she hesitated, then maybe I should too, right? We don't want to give them any sort of reason to doubt. So you wouldn't want to say things like, yeah, I researched Plexus for two months before I finally decided to join. Or I used the products for a year before I started to share with others. Or you might experience some detox. I had a headache for four days. Okay, so we want to keep things positive. We want people to jump in right away, you guys. We want them to jump in with everything here available to them, right? Sharing the products, sharing the opportunity to get the most from their membership. So um, this also makes me think of the objection that you guys may hear on welcome calls from people is I want to get my own results before sharing with others. Well, there's many different ways that we can help them overcome this objection. But basically, here's a few ideas for you guys. Feel felt found. If you have not heard that, go look up. Uh, I think it's Tara Castaneda feel felt found method. I love it. I think Sonia Dudley also has one of those videos, but basically I understand how you feel because I felt the same way too. But what I found is, so you're, you're getting down to their level of relating, but then you're telling them, I found a better way. I learned a different way. Um, so that's one way we can talk about how you don't have to have your results first. You can really just simply invite some people to join you in the journey as you're starting your products. I talk to my people about, hey, you can borrow my belief. You can borrow all the belief, all the stories we see in the gut health and happiness page. I remind them that even though they struggle with an autoimmune issue, their best friend or their neighbor may never ever relate to that story because that's not what they struggle with. But they may be able to relate with a story on the gut health and happiness page. So great tool to plug people into. All right, moving on. So then um, Romy goes and talks about how we should be leading with the business opportunity first. So I'm not going to say that she's right and I'm not going to say she's wrong, but I will just tell you guys that there are diamonds and leaders on our team that have always led with the products. And there's diamonds and leaders on our team that more, more so lead with the business opportunity. And then there's lots of us, including myself, that lead with both. Sometimes it's the business, sometimes it's the product. When I'm following up, then I'm switching. Sometimes it's the product, sometimes it's the business. So I don't think there's one right way. If you guys are getting results, if you're having joins on your team, if you're getting a 10 to 20% silver rate, so let's say you have 10 people on your team, you should have one or two going silver, then you're doing great. There's no reason to switch things up, you guys, if you're getting results. But if you're not, you may want to try op leading with the opposite thing. But the point that we really want to get across to you guys is that you need to be as confident and excited about sharing the opportunity as you are the products. And if you're struggling, you're having doubt, you're having belief issues with this opportunity or that you could even share it and be successful, I'm going to encourage you guys to really dig into this belief because sharing this opportunity and getting people sharing and duplicating on your team is so important. It's a fourth of your business. So I'd love for you guys to throw in the chat, what are some ways that you guys grow your belief or your confidence in this business opportunity? Diamond documentaries, yes, 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 yes. The why plexus or because of plexus. I love those short little videos. Those are so great. Oh, a lot of you guys are watching videos. Good job. Consistently posting events. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Everyone should be getting to convention, by the way. Make it happen because you guys, that event will change your life, change your business. 
Y plexus. Yep. Diamond dock. Yeah. So anything that, that leaves you like, Hmm, that's really encouraging. That's inspiring. Wow. I can relate with that or so-and-so in my life. I think she could relate with that convention, Emily. I love it. Oh, it's the deadline is May 15th. That's Sunday. Okay. Don't miss that guys. Okay. So back to the book. Um, and let's chat about money quick, you guys. So at the end of the day, there's going to be lots of reasons that people tell you they're sharing, right? They want to help other people feel better. Um, they love being a part of the community, whatever the, the reason is. But at the end of the day, it's, it's about the money, right? It's, it's a business. And so um, at the end of the day, people just want to know, is it, can I make real money? Can I be successful here? Um, and not just you guys, how much money can I make? But you want to make sure you find out what are they going to do with the money? How can that money impact their family? How can it change their current situation? So if someone comes to you and says, yes, I'd love to make that $405 bonus this month. I let's do it. You're not going to just get them into action. Take a second to, to take a step back and ask some more questions. Awesome. We can totally help you make that. What would that $400 do for your family right now? How would that impact your summer? And that is going to help you already start to develop their why and make that emotional connection because as they get running, they're going to, they're going to trip along the way a little bit, right? They're going to get someone saying no, or they're going to get rejected, or they're going to realize this is harder than they think, or they might have to get out of their comfort zone. So having that reason for why they're doing this and how it's going to help them is so key. So let's talk about social media posting. Guys, we have to be careful about putting exact amounts out there. We can't do that. But here are some ideas for you guys. I just got another email that I've been paid and the amount is going to cover our mortgage this month. So showing them what you're doing with the money and everybody can relate with a mortgage because everybody has one. Here's another idea. Never did I think when I started this new adventure a year ago that I would be making more than I did in my nursing career or my teaching position or whatever job it is. Another one, you can talk about your first check with a comma. Shout it out in the chat if you if this month was the very first month that you got a check with a comma in it. We want to celebrate you guys. I know that there are several people on my team, and I don't think they're on here, but they got a check with a comma. Brooklyn, congratulations. That's so exciting. That's a huge deal. Um, but yeah, talk about that comma and what that means to you and how that impacts your family. Uh, here's another idea for you guys. My good friend and amazing leader, so-and-so makes over six figures a year sharing health and wellness with others. She's been able to fund a charity has, and has been able to put all five of her children in private school. Another one. I cannot wait to get my first bonus here in my side gig. It's going to allow us to plan a summer vacation of our dreams. Who everyone can relate with that, right? Everybody wants to have, um, be able to go on a vacation, whether it's spring break, summer, winter, whatever. Here's another idea. I just left the grocery store and didn't have to check my bank account before checking out. And then I put there, this hasn't happened in five years. Tugging at the heartstrings, right? And then, oh, here, here's a few more. I was on a roll today with these ideas. After just a month of sharing my plant-based powered products, I've been able to get my own products covered and cover our car payment too. In January, I started with Plexus. And since then, I've helped 30 people take back their health from five different states. I thought that was fun. The states part she mentioned in the book. Another one, I gave myself a 50% raise this past year in my business. And these are just starter lines, right? So you would, of course, expand on that. You talk about the ranks, the bonuses, and then... Um, try to include things like giving and volunteering, right? Having more time to volunteer at your kid's school or being able to start up a charity or fund something that's really close to your heart. Um, okay, those are all my examples. I hope those are helpful for you guys. Okay, so a great way to end a conversation can be to turn it back on the person that you're talking to. 
if you had extra money coming in to cover living expenses, what would you love to be able to do? Again, focusing it back on them. If time and money, here's another idea. If time and money were not a limitation, what would your life look like? Or how would it look different? If you could make an extra $400 this month for your family, what would you do with it? So your story, you guys, just like your why, will evolve over time as you continue to grow your team and your paycheck and as you spend more time here with Plexus. So remember to go back and review it and edit it often. And then remember, there is no comparison. Every single person here tonight, all 48 of us, is so different. We all have our own story, our own why. So be proud of that. Um, you do not have to have a major success which you're comparing yourself. If you're like, I'm just not as successful, that's comparison. You know, what is success to you? But you can still share it on social media. You can still share it on a welcome call. You can still go live and share your story. Um, Terry and I both started exactly where you guys are. And often what I found you guys is those smaller victories, like a comma in your paycheck are more relatable to people than six figures. So, I mean, maybe it's paying for organic food. Maybe it's not having to put something on the credit card again. Maybe it's paying for summer camp. Maybe it's buying birthday gifts without stressing out. That used to be me. All holidays, I hated because I felt so stressed having to figure out how to buy presents for all the people that I wanted to give to, but really didn't have the funds for. So people are drawn to your authenticity. So even if you're scared to put your story out there, go and do it. It's important to do that. Remember, stay others focused. Remember that as you're posting, focus on others being able to see that post and how it might be the post they need to see for it to finally click of what they could have happen to them here with this opportunity. So I'm going to go to page 65 quick as we're almost wrapping things up here. 65. Um, Okay, so this is an example of authenticity here. So it says, maybe your truth is for the last year, um, I've loved the wholesale discount and home-based business tax deductions, but I've treated this like a hobby. Okay, so this is for people who feel like you quit and now you're back, which was me at one point. Or maybe you feel like I had a really slow start with this. It's okay. That's part of your story. Go and be vulnerable, right? I've surround, I'm surrounded by success success stories of what can happen when you treat this like a business and I'm ready to run. I'm looking for people to run with me. Everybody wants to be a part of something. Are you one of them? Or when I started, I really got in my own way. Mind trash anybody. I wasn't coachable and I let fear get the best of me, but I'm surrounded by success stories of what can happen when you are coachable and follow the simple duplicate, dupe, duplicable business. <laughs> And I'm not going to let fear keep me from reaching my goals. So I loved those examples. The best way that we can help people understand that they can do this, show them. Go show them and share other stories with them that they can relate with. So you guys already mentioned these Diamond Docs. You can find a whole uh, playlist of them on the Plexus Worldwide YouTube site. People are from all walks of life, right? Men and women, young and not so young, teachers, stay-at-home moms, medical professionals, working moms, single moms, dads, a student, a couple building together, full-time working parents. I mean, people who couldn't afford to pay their bills, Jennifer Leith, I love her diamond documentary, um, people who didn't even care about the money and people who are anti-MLM, right? People all over the board, watch the documents and then send them to people that um, will be able to relate with them. So success stories are so powerful and seeing people overcome them, you guys can be the very thing that helps the viewer to also work through their objection. Take the time each week, guys, to build your belief in this opportunity and yourself and the products. And remember that input equals output. So whatever you're putting in is what you can expect to come out. If you're not putting input in or it's bad input, that's what's going to be your output. One quick thing, um, social media wise is celebrate those who rank up on your team. So if you had someone go silver, any rank really go. And if you have a, grab a picture of them 
if you have a picture of you and them, a picture of both of you, throw it, throw that up on Instagram or Facebook or in your story, and then talk about them, tell their story, right? You can even fe feature their story that they're going to go and write from this class here, this session from these chapters. Um, but make a relatable story that other people can see and be inspired by. And then lastly, you guys don't have to have your own story to start sharing right away. Um, I, like I said, the day I clicked enroll, I was out there sharing. I used the tools, I used my sister's success story and I was off and running. So um, I have four more post ideas and then we're gonna wrap it up with Terry. So here's a post idea. If you're having someone share before they get their products or even as they're just getting started. It could be something like, I am just getting started on a new health journey and I'm so excited to start feeling my best. And then continue on with that. Just a picture of themselves. It could be um, sharing your sponsor's story or your person sharing your story, your success story. My friend has gotten help with ABC. Who else out there is looking for help in their health? Here's another idea. I cannot wait to get my box in the mail. More energy, less sugar cravings, better digestion, peaceful sleep. I am ready. Who wants to join me? Short and sweet, guys. And then um, just as we wrap up, you guys, stories sell. So the sooner you get better at crafting, editing, and collecting stories, the more successful you will be. Terry? That was so good. We're getting good at this, Abby. <laughs> okay, y'all, for homework. Homework. Um, and y'all, it's super easy because we have already got the formula in the book. I'm going to do this too. Um, but we want y'all to take some time creating your own story. Um, this is something that you will be sharing with so many people. So it's really important to invest some time here. Um, and of course, feel free to share them with your upline, especially if you want their feedback. Um, also, going back to chapter three, if you are one to struggle with creating a list of potentials, um, then we just challenge you to use the list um, in the book. I don't know, I don't know exactly what page that's on, um, but use that list. Y'all, I came up with 60 something more people in like, I mean, I probably didn't even spend 10 minutes. I'm telling you, like I was just like, oh my gosh, two and a half years later, and I'm still coming up with more people just looking at this list. So I'm sure you will be surprised to do that if you take the time to do it so that is y'all's challenge that is your homework and we still have eight minutes left so it did really good thank y'all for hopping on um and we're really excited to see y'all next week super proud for y'all coming back that means we didn't do too terrible the first time <laughs> all right bye y'all hey guys